the number one reggae radio station on air, online, online. everywhere, worldwide. Sorry. And yeah, man, this brings us to the story top now. As we said earlier, all the women, them, we celebrate them all the yes, time. Yes. And uh, there's one woman that we really need to celebrate. And that's who we're talking about today on Story Tap. Mm -hmm. And who could that be? It is Empress Tetu Betul, who was a formidable queen and empress of Ethiopia mm -hmm. from 1889 uh, to 1913. Yes. She was the wife of Emperor Menelik II mm -hmm. and the inspiration behind the 1896 Ethiopian victory against colonialism in the Battle of Adwa. She founded Addis Ababa, Ethiopia's capital city. Mm -hmm. So that's who we're going to be talking about, Story Tap. You know, um, the strength of a woman, musical yes. sheriff, yes. is something that Empress Tetu Betul just really showed yeah yes, yes. so um we're gonna tell people more about what her life was about but um just in short you know um she was a warrior queen mm -hmm. and she actually went out mm -hmm. on a horse yeah. with her husband yes. to fight the war during the battle of adwa, during the battle of adwa which yes. is uh one of the most um you know important battles if you ask me in mm -hmm. african history because it set the trend for so many things mm -hmm. and we're gonna be discussing how this empress mm -hmm. actually um you know stood up and stood up for africa not just yes. for ethiopia mm -hmm. and that is Empress Tetu Betul. And yeah, man, we're going to be talking that um, on Story Tab, but as well as still playing you some more big, big tunes right here. Vibes Radio, we rule the nation in this generation. Yeah, man, we are stirring it up right about now, right here on Vibes Radio Season Seco. And we are talking about an empress who set such a good example for a lot of other empresses everywhere. Mm -hmm. And yes, I, um, Empress Tetu. And she's from Ethiopia. She was, um, you know, one of those warrior queens we used to hear about as Rasta. And um, I thought, because it's International Women's Day, it's nice to learn a little bit about her. She did so much, and we can't talk about it all in this hour. Yes. But one thing um, she's acknowledged is uh, uh, she had considerable political power as the wife of Menelik before and after mm -hmm. they were crowned emperor and empress in 1889. Now, Menelik, you know, Anome. Yeah. Vile mnakuaga, hata mkikuwa kwa power, mujui kusema yes or no, mnakuwa na later na maybe. So this is how Menelik was. I have something to say about that. Where Maliza? I have something to say about that. You have something to say? Okay, let me tell you. So this is Emperor Menelik, right? Yes, yes. And he oh, he never used to like unpleasant. I, f I know, I think as a boss, um, Sheriff, you mm -hmm. know about this vibe. Yes. You don't like telling people negative things or cutting them off or saying bad things to them, right? So sometimes, or when you're asked to make a decision on the spot, you'll mm -hmm. be like, Badai. Tonga Badai. I've done that a lot. Yo, so Tonga Kesho. Tonga Kesho. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, so <laughs> this was... you want to go and collect your thoughts. Exactly. And decide what exactly. You so that's what I'm getting to. So Menelik was like that. The mm -hmm. Emperor Menelik was like that. Mm -hmm. So he used to go, Ishinega, which means mm -hmm. yes tomorrow. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, he used to find it easy to say Ishinega because it's like Ishi, Ishi is yes, tomorrow. Yeah. Yes, tomorrow we'll talk yeah. about it yeah. and dismiss it. But then Empress used to be like, absolutely not. It's not going to happen. Leo, I'm a Kesho, I'm a Kesho Kutwa. I eat up and I eat up and you feel me? So he had an Empress who was like, Skiza, where come about on of Kiria Kesho and the answer? I'm going to answer for you right now because she know, she know the man. You know, Pia, my queen, Munakwam Najua, he's sheriff, I like. So if it was your wife, she'd be like, Sheriff, ataki kusema no, lakini ataki kuimbarasu mse, lakini anasema kesho, lakini wacho ni msaidie, no, you see? So Empress Tetu, watu wakanza kumjua because of that, like, yes. okay, when the emperor is there hmm. and he tells us tomorrow, yes. and then she's gonna come and just be like Z, hmm. it's not gonna happen. So yeah. people were, you know... um, had issues uh, and he, he didn't want to offend them or refuse yeah. but Empress Tetu was unpopular while Menelik remained very loved so what she did she was very smart she was like because me I'm the one who said no yeah. but leave the emperor alone yes. he's not yes. the one who said no so they continued like really looking up to him and loving him mm -hmm. but they used to be like ah no mama you kwapa and I think it happens a lot everywhere that's what I wanted to tell you about <laughs> talk about that <laughs> You know, <clears throat> I was reading about this and then I was thinking, um, you see, in actual context right now, even in Kenya or in Africa or, or the world over. Yeah. And you know this better because uh, you've been in this situation. In married life, the wife is the one who wields all the power in the house. As yeah, in, see, see? she really does. I mean, <laughs> you never know until you sign 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 those papers. Then you're like, ooh. Where? So we only watch an example, Mzuri. So where when you have 
umeenda kwa supermarket unabai TV umeleta kwa nyumba. Yeah. <laughs> Ati best yako atoke huko akuja kuambie acha nichukue TV ndio nayo kwangu kidogo. Utaona bibi akitoa hapo kichwa ati ati, ati umesema hii kitu itoke hapa. <laughs> and see at ali bye. And then Ola. pesa. <laughs> pesa yako, pesa yangu. But so yangu, let me tell you uh, yako, lakini ni yetu. Ni hapana. <laughs> Yako ni yetu <laughs> yangu ni yangu. Sindio yako ni yako wewe wife na yangu ni yetu. Ya man the empress them you see they carry babies for you and share the babies with you. Imagine. <laughs> imagine mtu anabeba mtu hii for 9 months anasema our baby. Can you imagine even even <laughs> even even dinga. Dinga tu. Ile kiti ya mbele pande ya Yo pia Wacha hata mtutu wa kawash asongeshe hiyo kiti kidogo tu isonge tu vile kukua. Nani alikomeka hapa? Hey, fire. <laughs> we are stirring it up and we're talking about a warrior queen and a musical sheriff. I was hearing some stories. It seems <laughs> it seems nothing has changed since 1800, 1889 it to 2020. Never change. <laughs> Whether nani ya ruke ya ruke atoke jua ruke chini ya kuja ashuke. The empress is never change. Say is the final say, right? <sighs> and yes, we've been talking about Empress Tetu and um you know, she was the wife of Menelik and uh they were both crowned emperor and empress in 1889. Mm-hmm. And uh previously previously we told you about how uh, Menelik was always afraid to say no. But yeah. the empress she would yeah. just say hapo hapo zini zi you know una vile hata kwa nyumba kwa nyumba unaambiaga unaambia baba yako anakuambia una permission to your dad at daddy i want this ambio talk to your mom <laughs> yeah first talk to your mom because akisema yes <laughs> And then mom ma- mother alikuwa jasema yes in as a letter fia mingine so if mom says yes it's yes, a yes it's a yes if she says no it's a no uh, yako. Yeah. <laughs> and so yes we are stirring it up about her yes according to the royal historians the emperor um, always consulted her prior to making important decisions hence uh, empress tetu was a key player in the conflict over the treaty of Wichal, Wichale yeah. with italy which she tore up any unaona alirarua ali alirarua yo treaty but you know what Gani i like no you know she was really smart yeah mm-hmm. she she read through it she yes. read through the treaty she yeah. knew that mm-hmm. there was something fishy in this thing you know yes. yeah uh, and cause uh, italy um, in the, in the Italy, italian version of the treaty italy had made ethiopia an italian protectorate as in nyinyi mtakuwa sisi ndo wadusi wenu yeah then while the amharic version that's the ethiopian version did not do so so let's stop right there mm-hmm. Kama si mwanamke kukaa na kusoma version mbili kuna ya ya nini ya Amharic eh and an Italian one so the empress was smart enough to read both of them these two treaties and see mm-hmm. so these guys are trying to fool us yes. wameandika kwa hii Amharic mm-hmm. to sign mm-hmm. they're not going to be we're not going to be under them but mm-hmm. in the Italian one they wrote yeah. that Ethiopia is going to be under Italy mm-hmm. So she tore it up and that's like where everything started. But you see that's empresses wako. You know this thing of why are you always so um in, like you feel like there's always something wrong. You're not trusting anybody. Kila mtu tu unakuja unaambia wife wako so kuna hii deal anasema but hiyo deal no what do they want from you? No they don't want anything from me to not do deal pamoja. No but what do they want from you? You know and you're there arguing with your wife. But she can see and I think it's a woman's instinct. It's have, just something that we know. Have you ever seen um when ladies and men men are doing business? Yeah. If if, if for example you're a dude or you're doing business with a lady, hapo mtasumbuana. Sababu first of all if there's a contract if there's a contract to be to be signed. Eh atakana. Atasoma fine print. Kila kitu. Apelekie lawyer. Make sure. Akisha maliza lawyer some angalia angalia kwambia ambia akisha mbwe iko sawa tena bado rudi some mwenyewe. It has to be the empress state to spirit. Lakini guys, guys, ah, ati sign here. Ati how much? Ati ati hii deal itakula how much? Hata angalia ni mapena sign, ana sign. Ati ati sijui anaambia what he your life away. Agree. Hapo chini hata hata kwanza kama hizi za software. Agree yeah. kwa Facebook. Kwa, click agree. Eh. No fine print. Yeah man, so me I love that. I I think you know when um uh, when she realized the Amharic version uh, yeah. and the Italian one was different. Mm-hmm. Eh, she she was like the first one to come through to the to the emperor. Yes. And stand up. Akamwambia boss. And other men, mazeskizeni hapa mm-hmm. kuna vile we are going to stand up for our own. Yes. Our own people and mm-hmm. our own liberty. Hakuna mtu tuna sign na yeye. Nini wala nini? We are going in a war. Asa kitu fani ni aliambia wanaume. Mkanyange nje. 
Mukanyange inje. Mukanyange inje. Yes, I, and let me tell you, we're talking about the Empress right here. And yes, I, we are stirring it up still. And we're talking about the strongest Empress you ever know, ever, ever. And I can see also the Vibes Nation saying, uh, Victor Polo saying, greeting season circle. Big up to the strongest woman Empress, Tatu Battle. Listening with my brethren, Martin Bachu, Russ TV, and Russ McKenzie from Thika Kiganjo. Big up on herself, all Thika Massive. And Victor Polo says, yes, I get ready for more teachings. This is Turret Top with Empress Naz and Musical Sheriff. Mm-hmm. Big up Russ McKenzie, Russ TV, and Martin Bachu. We reasoning heavy out of Thika. And yeah, man, I can see a lot of people saying so many things. Vincent Kwan says yes, what? I see uh, Victor Apollo saying, yes, I yeah. get ready. Uh, I see almost on my way. I see Vic, Vic, Vic Uncho <laughs> Kwan says, greetings to you, Season Circle crew. Welcome back, Nazizi, the Blessed Ruth's daughter and musical sheriff. Yes. The sheriff of the musical experience. The music easing up my soul and oh, feeling oh, by blessed. By the way. That's your new name. Nili Pona Kwambox. Eh, Nili of, of the, the musical, musical experience. experience. Wow. <laughs> now, what do I mean, That's why we love Vibes Nation. Mukorada Mbaya. And I love it when you do that. I can see Mike Chaira writing also big up on herself and uh, a lot of love. We're going to be coming into that later mm-hmm. on. And um, I know there's somebody saying, um, Franco Mosh, happy Women's Day, Nazizi. Mm-hmm. I celebrate you. Kama kuna, kama kuna mtu wa kwa kwa kutambui, mm-hmm. mimi na kutambu ambaya sana. What? Na kuna warning tumepewa, tumepewa hapa na kiriko wa mambo. <laughs> Aka sema, muni salimia manikimbechena ni kujena corona. Eh, eh, tu umesalimiwa eh, sana. Buda, Buda, salimika. Yes, I. Kiriko wa mambo, salimika. <laughs> <laughs> talking up Empress Betu still. Yes. And, uh, you know, we've been telling you her story and why she's an empress to celebrate during this International Women's Month. Mm-hmm. Now, um, Italy invaded the empire from the Eritrean because, you know, they had taken over Eritrea. So they came through from there now after the treaty, after uh, Empress mash up the paper and, and everything. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And... Um, you know what the empress did? Yeah. She marched. She went north with the emperor and the imperial army. Yes. And she commanded a force of uh, cannoneers mm-hmm. at the historic battle of Adwa. So those yes. guys who have the big cannons and yeah. the big round balls, she was the head <laughs> of that. And um, actually what happened, it uh, was now the historic battle of Adwa, mm-hmm. which resulted in a humiliati- hum- humiliating defeat for Italy in March yes. 1896. Mm-hmm. So it was during this month. Mm-hmm. It was a march, but it was 1896. Uh, now, mm-hmm. she also mobilized women as fighters, as nurses, as soldiers. Mm-hmm. And uh, there is one time, you know, some people... Um, were a bit scared. Mm-hmm. They were like, eh, maybe we're going to die. Mm-hmm. She was there in the front line, bravely. She was like, listen, if you guys are not motivated, me, I'm going to be here. So you know how you guys, wanaume muko. Musha na kuna wanaumke kwa front line. You're like, listen, I'm not going to be afraid. Let me even miki dogo nisogele kwa yo vita. You know what I mean? Kama kuna kitu uangumu kujificha, macho ya manamuke. Yani unajaribu kutoka yorusu ya tu macho. Jaribu. Jaribu kutoka. Jaribu. Macho tu. Let me tell you, Zari it's true. Where, where, are you are you where are you going? Where are you going? You know, can't go nowhere, Manalayan. Where are you going? So she showed people, I think she was the real example of Manalayan mm-hmm. because she was there in the front <laughs> and guys were trying to turn cat on her. And yes. she was like, if I can stand in a front line of mm-hmm. this battle mm-hmm. as the empress, yes. who are you to I'll come here? to myself. Yeah, so they had to really just... Um, you know, pull up their socks. <laughs> and so, you know, um, there's this saying that Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands, right? Yes, so yes. one thing, yeah, um, it comes from a biblical psalm and it it reflects the modern global rise of Pan-African vision of freedom. Mm-hmm. So now after the success of Ethiopia against colonial rule, because as we all know, I think mm-hmm. the Vibes Nation all know, Ethiopia was never colonized, right? Yes. The only so African country. Only African country that was never colonized. And this was because of this empress, remember? Yes. It is the empress who stood up and made sure Ethiopia is not colonized. So after that happened, mm-hmm. um, people started beginning to think of forming a United States of Africa. Mm-hmm. Others broadened their political views to include black societies throughout the world, um, including the African diaspora. They, there was a lot in the states. There was a whole movement there. Yes. And so they, when they heard about Ethiopia, mm-hmm. It brought this idea of black so- solidarity. Yes, and decolonization. Yeah, and that Ethiopia actually did stretch forth her hands because Ethiopia is mentioned in the oldest books of the Bible as well. well. Ataqua Bible. It is Iko. there. Yeah, and that's why I told you in the Psalms, Ethiopia shall stretch forth her hands. Mm-hmm. It really makes sense when you look at it at the Pan African level yes. of she stretched forth her hands and opened African unity. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, it, uh, it also. Um, 
studied the Pan-Africanism movement and Ethiopia grew uh, among the global community and was brought into the League of Nations in 1923. Yes. Um, this also thwarted future movement by Europeans to colonize the nation and shattered the centuries old negative myths about Africans, which was super important. So the victory of Adwa actually helped produce a new phase of Pan-Africanism yes. and it planted the seed of unity and cooperation of blacks throughout the world mm -hmm. and it helped to break the yoke of colonialism. So you can imagine during this time, mm -hmm. Africans were like, they were just being colonized left, right and center. Yes. Yes. And um, in the in the West, there were slaves. Mm -hmm. In Africa, there were, you know, and so when Ethiopia came out like mm -hmm. this, mm -hmm. strong, yes. guys were like, wait, we have the power. Yes. Why? If Ethiopia can do it, why can't we do it? And, you know, we have to give so much thanks to Empress Beitu because without her, without her double-checking woman skills, <laughs> we could have been, um, there would have been no country that wasn't ever colonized, yeah. right? And um, just, uh, you know, that's what we've been doing today, stirring it up on Empress Beitu. I hope we taught you something important. Mm -hmm. And if I learned anything, always listen to the woman them from this story. Mm -hmm. They know what they're talking about. <laughs> The number one reggae radio station on air, online, online everywhere, online. worldwide.